Hi, Zero Doers, and welcome back to this video on bank configuration, where we'll cover all the important details of setting up our bank journal in Odoo. Before we jump into that, it's important to understand the journal entries of the standard workflows involving the bank journal so that we know what we're doing. In the standard invoicing workflow, confirming an invoice creates a journal entry that debits the account receivable, indicating that the customer owes us money, and credits one or multiple income accounts and tax accounts. Then, registering a payment creates a journal entry that debits the outstanding receipts account and credits the account receivable. This balances the account receivable, meaning the customer doesn't owe us any more money, and the debit in the outstanding receipts account indicates that we've received this payment and that we'll need to reconcile once it clears the bank and we see it in our bank transactions. The bank transaction itself for this incoming customer payment creates a journal entry that debits the bank account because we have more money in the bank and credits the bank suspense account. This suspense account is a temporary placeholder until the transaction is reconciled. Finally, when the bank transaction is reconciled with the payment, rather than creating a new journal entry, Odoo modifies the bank transaction journal entry by substituting the bank suspense account that has been credited with the outstanding receipts account instead. This balances the outstanding receipts account and the entire payment workflow is complete. While this may seem like a complex process, remember that this whole workflow is often spread out across days, if not weeks, and that this process is what allows us to track the status of each payment so that we always have a transparent view of our finances. Now that we understand which account is hit in which step, let's take a look at where to set each of these accounts in Odoo. So here we are in our Bloom database, and the first thing we'll do is go into our accounting settings. And if we scroll down to the default accounts section, we can see that we have four accounts in this section concerning bank transactions and payments. The first is the bank suspense account. So remember, this is the account that is used just temporarily opposite the bank account itself between when the bank transaction is created and when it is reconciled. Next, we have the outstanding receipts account. This is a holding account that is hit opposite the account receivable on the journal entry for our customer payments. Then, when the bank transaction is reconciled, this outstanding receipts account replaces the bank suspense account on the journal entry of the bank transaction. The outstanding payments account behaves the same way but for when we register outgoing payments to our vendor bills. Finally, we have the internal transfer account that is used to balance the journal entries of any transfers that we make from one bank or cash account to another. As you can see, all of these fields have a default account set already, but if you want to select a different account to be used in these situations, this is where you would configure that. Next, we'll go to our bank journal itself. And you can do that either by going through this configuration menu or from the dashboard by clicking on the three dot on the kebab menu and going to configuration. So here we obviously have our journal name and type, but we also have the bank account for this journal. It's important to note that this must be unique. So you can't have multiple bank journals that use the same account here. That wouldn't make sense. Next, we have the option to override the default accounts from the settings for this specific journal. So if we wanted a different suspense account for this bank account, then we can set that here. We, of course, have to set a short code for our journal, but we can leave the currency field blank if we don't want to limit the entries in this journal entry in this journal to one specific currency. On the right side, we have the option to set the IBAN number for this account, which is required in some localizations for making payment files such as SEPA or NACHA. We also have the option to set up the automated bank sync feature, which we cover in detail in another video, so be sure to check it out. I see that you have the option to override the default suspense account. But what about ascending payments and receipts accounts? Can we only have one of each on a DB? Good question. So, 
If we open the incoming payments or the outgoing payments tab, we can see all of the different payment methods that are available for this journal. And we have the option to unhide the outstanding receipts and outstanding payments fields. Here, we can set the outstanding accounts for this journal specifically. And this can be helpful if you have multiple bank journals and you don't want them all to use the same outstanding accounts as it can get a little confusing. Lastly, if we wanted to add a new payment method, for example, a method for meal vouchers on our outgoing payments tab, then we could do that by adding another line here for another manual payment method. And then we can change the name to meal voucher. That's all for this video. Be sure to check out our other videos on customer and vendor payments and the outstanding accounts, as well as bank transactions and bank sync. This has been your pal Dow. I'll see you in the next one.